Ah, welcome back my gardening friends. Well, it's time to plant the uh, asparagus. Now, I grew this from seed from my uh, own plant off plot one and was uh, a volunteer. And strangely enough, where the slabs were, uh, it popped up from there and it's just got bigger and bigger and bigger. And here are the um, seeds. I planted these once I dried them straight away in the uh, fall and we ended up uh, with the plants you see now so this is how we started them off in here and uh, Becky from Becky's allotment said uh, she did this, but they uh, didn't do so well, so she, re she recommended to pop them up. So uh, you uh, see the difference. So if you are growing them from your own seed or bought seed, keep increasing uh, the size of the pots. Uh, I'll just move these out of the way here now, and I'll explain to you and show you what I've uh, done here. So I was uh, preparing the bed not fully like this but uh, let's make sure you can see these ridges maybe not but uh, I've got most of the uh, ridges done and uh, a little bit of the um, perlite and compost that I find on the side of the road and uh, Becky was saying no need to actually ridge them and worry about the roots going down either side because it's a raised bed and it's well drained so I've left it like that anyway because under here I've put some uh, equivalent to 6x uh, the uh, like the farm yard manure type stuff uh, we've ridged it up and then we've put the um, perlite and stuff down the down the sides just for added drainage So you, you could probably see the the difference there so I'm going to uh, finish this off and get these in before the uh, the weather changes uh, uh, yet again I've just opened the uh, first one up and you can see there plenty of root growth so they're desperate to get in uh, I made a little boo-boo but uh, lessons learned uh, for you and yourselves these have been left on the wood chip floor um, during these wet times and I've been finding them uh, on the sides uh, on the bottoms and when we take the pot out actually uh, within the uh, the root system so I should have uh, maybe checked them before I just plonked them on top of the bed uh, yesterday and this is another pot and uh, we've got one uh, hiding uh, in there so it is well worth just checking before we plant them so uh, everything looks uh, really healthy this used to be uh, the uh, permanent uh, bean bed for last year but uh, grew far too many <coughs> beans so I thought this would be ideal here uh, the asparagus will get really high uh, it will shelter the um, fruit cage but we're not worried about that and it was my intention to actually remove the asparagus from the greenhouse there but if I did that I wouldn't have any as, uh, asparagus uh, uh, next year so it will stay where it is for now 
but as you can see that asparagus uh, was uh, really uh, getting big and established and it'd be a shame to move it now these are my underground <laughs> worm farms if you haven't seen those before and uh, this is the material and uh, if it isn't taken away then I can always uh, spread it across there that's really quite good stuff there we go So, talking of slugs, um, I tidied some uh, the uh, the sprouting broccoli up the other day and dropped a leaf on the floor. And because I found some slugs this morning, I just had a quick look and I thought I'd have a quick look. And uh, there, there was one here, but uh, there you go. So he's found uh, shelter under the uh, leaf and. In the middle of the screen there was where he was having uh, a nice uh, chomp uh, on the uh, leaf and in the future I should be collecting all the slugs and uh, I'll have a go at uh, making my own uh, nematodes because all slugs have got one or two nematodes on them and if you can uh, collect enough they'll multiply so every, where it's touching the ground there you can see there may be the slightest of slug trails there and uh, something I've been wanting to show you for a while was that there and I think that might be some asparagus another volunteer those birdies love the, love the berries and then they poop on your plot and then they grow on these very very uh, wet damp mornings or evenings it's well worth uh, having a, a, a little look round now I'm not expecting any slugs uh, in this pallet collar bed because it is fairly new but uh, if the slugs want somewhere to hide then uh, they have got somewhere and that way we can uh, we can harvest slugs as well as vegetables no I'm not going to eat the slugs guys I'm just going to peel back uh, this one and this one, see uh, if there's anything other than worms under there. And plenty of worms and they love the cardboard. And uh, if I was a worm, that's where I'd be mate uh, mating. Nice damp and uh, warm. So these raised beds that are in a polytunnel it doesn't look like it at the moment and I can't actually see uh, any slugs we've got the odd uh, worm this soil hasn't got any manure in that's the difference if I was to put some manure on here you'd uh, you'd find uh, the worms but no slugs so I'm a happy chappy and I'm thinking more and more now, why should I put the, the plastic slug traps on the beds? Why not catch them uh, before they get there? And uh, I've just turned this over. And uh, this one has seeked a refuge under there. So with all the uh, new wood chips down, they do congregate. So we do, uh, I think that's going to be my better option. Leave the odd leaf on the floor and a bit of plastic. And uh, we'll catch them before they get to the beds. And uh, after watching Ronald Shaw, he originally had his netting on the floor and he put his pots, because he does a lot of container growing, and he noticed, just by coincidence, that he didn't get any slug action or damage on anything he'd got there uh, so I did this and then uh, Ronald has actually created a, a mini slug so the slugs crawl up there come up to the top get can't get through the netting and then they just can't decide uh, how to get into the bed so uh, I will be uh, replicating that on these beds uh, I haven't noticed a great deal of slug action but I have got to be careful in the future so lesson learned 
you learn from my mistakes guys this is what we do this is all about sharing we will be doing some work on the polytunnel soon and uh, I've got these um, curb stones these are where the vehicles cross the footpath to uh, get access to the drive so I'm going to have a little look there see if there's anybody hiding again we've got uh, some worm action and uh, as we move along there there's another one so uh, I think that's going to be my best plan so at the other end of the polytunnel now and this one was on its on the side I'll get quite a few of these little black ones they probably like the wood chips but uh, I'm getting obsessed now guys I don't see anything on that one unless they're hiding but uh, plenty of worm action in the uh, wood chips and uh, I'll get rid of these few now so from a volunteer nature always finds uh, a way whether it be intervention from ourselves or the wildlife to create volunteers from the wildlife and within a few years time a wonderful bed of uh, asparagus that we created this sprouting broccoli has uh, come unhitched and dropped over and I've got nets there to stop uh, the pigeons landing on them and you can see there lots of broken branches this side and that side where the pigeons have landed it's snapped and then they've uh, flew off nothing I can do with that now and I'll leave you with my uh, Brussels sprouts we've had our first harvest and uh, I must say they were very nice even though they weren't frosted Yes, there's going to be an excuse me. Very nice indeed. If you've uh, liked the content of uh, this video, then please consider subscribing. Hit the like or dislike button for the interaction. YouTube loves interaction. And always comment uh, with your com uh, suggestions, ideas to help us all be better gardeners. Till next time, my friends. Try for now.